Hi, I'm Christine Herman of Herman's Quality Meat Shop in Newark, Delaware. Welcome to my YouTube channel. We're going to be talking about smoked hands today. Are you ready? Have you ever heard the term pink ham versus red ham? We get that question often. So ham in general is the thigh of the pig and it is typically about 20 to 25 pounds. And it is used for a variety of cuts and um, pieces of meat that are used for prosciutto as well as for smoking. And the pink ham is the raw piece of meat before it's processed. The red ham is the smoked term. Once it's been smoked, it has more of a red texture and color to it, as you can see by the hams on my block. So the quality that we carry here is a very high quality, of course, because it's Herman's. Anyway, um, and we have a, a naturally smoked, comma, double smoked ham that we carry here. And you can see how beautiful this is. And I'll just kind of turn around like that and give you a nice view. You can see the natural fat that's in here and the bone that is in there. There are two sides, if you will, the, the upper portion and the lower portion of the ham. Um, one is called the hockless end, which is the shank end, and it is the smaller bone. And that is the lower portion, like going towards the, the lower portion of the leg. And the other is also call, is called the butt end, which is also has what we refer to as the H bone, and that's the hip bone, just to give you a hint. So this is, again, a naturally smoked ham, exactly the way it comes off the animal. And it is taken and it is put into the smoker and in, in it's cured brine and smoked twice, or the double smoked, as I mentioned before. And then... There's another version, which is the boneless ham, which you're probably familiar with, and you've had lunch meats and so on. And this one here is our, what we refer to as our old fashioned boneless ham. And it's basically this meat with the fat in it that looks like this. And when I cut it, it resembles this. And a close view, you can see more of the marbling. And that's the fat that's in it naturally occurring. And this is an amazing ham as it is, just as it is. The third ham that we carry here at Herman's is this one here, which you have probably are wondering what the outside coating is, and that is exactly that. It's a seasoning, and it is referred to as a, a black forest ham, and that's probably another term that you might be very well familiar with. And it is um, just the term that is also used for the seasoning and the coating on the outside. This particular ham is lower in salt and lower in fat. So we're looking at about 95% lean and very low in salt. And it has an amazing flavor and it's cured with honey. So it's got a little sweetness to it. We here at Herman's use this ham for our lunch meat. And if you've ever had our ham sandwiches, make your own ham sandwiches or your know, ham lunch meat, this is what we use, and that's why it's so delicious. I'm going to cut this so you can see the difference in the, in the leanness of the ham. And I'm just going to take a nice slice right here, and you can see again. It does still have some marbling, but also it has a little less marbling. And again, it is lower in salt and lower in fat. And these hams are ideal for a large crowd, a party, um, holidays, we sell a lot of these, all three of these hams for um, holidays such as Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and one of the things that we offer here as a service to our customers is we slice them on our lunch meat slicer and tie it back together 
so that you can, and this is the boneless ham, obviously, um, that you can, we tie it back together and then all you have to do is heat it, cut the strings, put it on the platter, you're good to go. It's very easy, very simple, and it can be served anywhere from room temperature up to hot. And you can put your own glaze on it, and it's, it's a very simple, depending upon the size, hour and a half cooking time. And again, because it's smoked, it's already cooked, you can eat it just the way it is, or you can add your own seasonings or glaze, I guess is a better word, to put on top of that. Oh my gosh, I would be remiss if I didn't give you some cooking instructions on how to prepare these delicious hams. Either way, a glaze is ideal. It doesn't have to be, but it's ideal just to give it your little personal touch. I like to use something simple like brown sugar and orange juice. Whatever you have in the house, if you have a marmalade, if you have honey and mustard that you like to combine, um, some cloves, pineapple and mustard is also nice, a little bit of brown sugar. If you want to make it really fancy, you take the pineapple slices and lay them on top with a maraschino cherry in the middle. Uh-huh. Yeah, that looks really nice presentation-wise. And you can pour, drizzle a little bit of either um, orange juice on top or some uh, mustard if you prefer. And bake it as such. And then when you're ready to serve it, voila, it's delicious. So these hands, I like to cook at 325, maybe an hour and a half, and any one of them covered because they're lean. This one I like to uncover and let it caramelize on the outside, and that um, makes it just that much better. A little, another little tip is score it. Lightly score the top. So you take your knife and just put little X's as such, if you can see what I'm doing here. And then that way, you don't want to go too deep, and then let the juices meld right inside. However, if we're going to slice and tie it for you, you don't have to do that because naturally it's already been sliced. Which brings me to another point. When you want to bake these, if you want to take, be right back, take a casserole dish and some aluminum foil. This is one of my best friends. Sorry for the rattling. Set it in your dish. Put your ham, obviously the correct size, and this is a perfect size for this ham. Set it in there. And then after you make your magic glaze, you can kind of tent it like that, not real tight, and then just kind of pinch the sides and bake it. And that way all the juices stay right inside the foil and they don't burn. And then, as I mentioned earlier, you just carefully pick it up as such and put it in your serving dish. Slide the foil out from underneath and either slice it if, it's, if you choose to have it whole or slide the foil out from underneath, cut the strings and just lay it nicely neat and present it the way you want. And if you have those pineapple and cherries on top, it looks really good. You can take any of that broth also and you can set it aside and heat it in a separate bowl and serve that as well. And then guess what you've just done? You've made cleanup really easy because all the mess is in the foil. How do you like that? And that right there brings me to my tip of the day. I am very conservative and I try not to waste. However, once in a while, depending upon what I'm cooking, I like to make cleanup easy. I don't mind scrubbing. We talked about my sponge before but I don't mind doing some little bit of elbow grease and scrubbing. However, when I know I'm doing something with lots of cheese, barbecue sauce, or sugars that can burn, or even sometimes certain oils that can burn into the dish and make cleanup a little more difficult, I like to line my pan with foil or my dish with foil, depending upon what it is, and it makes cleanup a little easier. However, when I do have an instance where I need a little extra soak, and I'm not big on soaking because I like to keep my dishes clean right away, but that's another story for another day. I like to use one of two products, either a little bit of baking soda in some hot water, chemical reaction for those chemists out there, and or some plain distilled white vinegar, and let your dish soak in that 
and it'll help dissolve the sugars and the other greases that need to come up and it also makes cleanup that much easier. Sometimes it only takes 15 minutes, sometimes it might take a little bit longer. Now, my mother-in-law's trick, she always liked to use the liquid automatic dishwashing detergent. I don't even know if they make that in liquid anymore, so I don't know if those pods would work, but she used to drizzle some of that dishwashing detergent and let her dishes soak in that. But for this case, I like to use the vinegar and or the baking soda because it creates that um, chemical reaction that helps to dissolve and eat away at some of those um, sugars that, that kind of can burn one and then just makes cleanup a little bit easier. So there you have it, our tip of the day as well as our ham discussion today. Thank you very much. God bless. Christine Herman. Whether you want to enjoy an old-fashioned bone-in ham or its sister ham, which is the old-fashioned boneless ham, or the honey-cured, low-salt, low-fat ham. Any one of these options are amazing. We highly recommend all three of them, depending upon your needs. So we hope that you will like our page, subscribe to our channel so you can see future videos, and please feel free to comment below, either about the hams or this video or any other information that you would like us to talk about in future videos. Thank you very much. We look forward to you joining our family. God bless you. Christine Herman.